my goodness. Listen to that ovation. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Our first guest today is a recent Outer Critics Circle Award nominee for Best Featured Actress in a Musical, and rightfully so. Her performance in Beetlejuice on Broadway is nothing short of show-stopping. She stars as Delia and the recently deceased Miss Argentina in this absolutely insane show. I can't wait to talk to her. The super awesome Leslie Kritzer is here. You guys excited? I'm excited. Are you excited at home? They're excited. So you better bring up the excitement. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we'll bring her out here in just a moment. But first, we have a really cool look at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. I'm gonna need some help. Hi, I'll be your guide. I'll be your G-U-I-D-E to the other side. The whole thing is deadly. Because I myself am strange and unusual. Ladies and gentlemen, please, yes, and a ridiculous amount of noise. Leslie Kritzer, right here. Thank you, thank oh. you. Shake, 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 Sonora, indeed. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is really cool. I, I've always wanted to do this, so I'm, I'm here. I am so excited you're here. I've always wanted to talk to you. This Yay. Wonderful. Congratulations. I got a chance to see this uh, insane, awesome, super fun show. You are amazing, and everyone's doing a fantastic job on that stage. You guys oh. are having a blast, I can tell. I'm really excited to talk to you about it. How is life? How, you guys are opening this week officially tomorrow like, tomorrow i'll hold tomorrow. for applause <laughs> yeah we open tomorrow night That's i can't incredible. believe it three oh years gosh. in the making we've been working three on this years show. yeah maybe a little over three years i we started working on the show from the first reading i was one of the, there's a small group of us that have stayed with it since the beginning but basically yeah it's been three years and now here we are oh I can't believe gosh. it that's so amazing well yeah. uh, double congrats I uh, really that's that's wonderful how did it start for you how did you, three years ago how did you get involved with this fantastic incredible show well uh, the amazing Alex Timbers who I did a little show called uh, the Robber bridegroom asked me to do it and we had been working together and he's like my comedy partner and he just gets everything that I kind of do and he's like hey I'm doing the show Beetlejuice so I was like, yeah, I'll be in it. Um, and so we started with a reading. And of course, it's an iconic movie. I stayed away from the movie because Catherine O'Hara is the queen. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of didn't use it. But um, did yeah. you not even watch it or return to it at all? Or did you not, like, it's better to ju like, literally stay away from it? I stayed away from it because also Delia in the show is very different than very Delia different. in the movie. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just kind of, which to the writer's credit is like really cool because I get to kind of create a whole new thing. Totally. Um, and still pay like play homage to her. Well, that's what I'm way. curious. Yeah, because you do a great job of that. And I'm curious when you're when you're coming into a show like this, you you know there's expectations. There's fans that expect to see uh, certain things be a certain way. How do you find? How do you straddle that line? How do you strike that balance between creating your your own version, between finding your Delia, but also finding those little moments to pay homage and, and, and sort of like wink and nod over to I know this other things out there. I mean, you know, so much comedy for me. I learned off of like the greats like her and you know any of those Christopher Guest movies you know C Catherine has a, like a thing that she does and so my personal homage to her is certain pronunciations of words that I will twist around like Christmas it's something that she would kind of do tell me you've seen her on Schitt's Creek I 
have not because again, I uh, because I'm waiting. I was like, let me open the show and then wait. Like I saw a little bit, and then once I knew it was coming to Broadway, I was like, okay, I can't, I can't. So I am like, it's it'll be like Christmas when I can finally sit yeah. down and, and watch it. Like it. Christmas. Christmas. It'll be uh, um, Christmas, and then so like little things like that, but really nothing from the movie I could pull. It's more yeah. my little tiny um, I love you, Catherine O'Hara moments. Mm. Um, and not just her, any female comedian, uh, comedians that I grew up loving. But the Christopher Guest clan, Parker Posey, those are my people. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a pretty cool clan. Yeah, to, if I could ever work with them, I, yeah, I yeah, of course. fall over and die. Um, did you feel at all coming into this property, like uh, any, any kind of nerves or pressure because of the fan base, because it's iconic, because it's Beetlejuice? Or did you feel like once they see what we're doing, we'll, we'll have them? I know that. Like, do you have confidence in what you guys are doing? Or were you a little nervous at all? I was not, surprisingly, nice. uh, because I didn't think of, I, I can really separate myself from when I do these things. I, I kind of think of it as a brand new thing. I don't I don't really get nervous about that. I get more nervous that I'm not going to deliver the material that's on the page. Like, right. that's what I get nervous about. I get nervous about making sure my jokes land, making sure uh, story-wise it's clear, the other stuff is really not for, for me to figure out. You know, you would think that the Deo thing, which is so iconic, well, yeah, would have made me scared. Yeah. And it never did. The first time we did it in D.C., we did a D.C. tryout. And the first time I opened my mouth for an audience, it said, Deo. And they went nuts. Right. That was the moment that I knew we were in one of those shows that these people love the movie. And I've done yeah. movie musicals before. Yeah, you'd Elf. Uh, uh, Elf, Legally, Legally Blonde, Blonde, Hairspray. Yeah, Hairspray. But that was the moment where I was like, oh, we got movie fan. Then yeah. it really hit me. And and then I got maybe a little nervous about that. But most of the time, it's it's such, it's so much fun. It's such can a you, ride. Can you, now that you know that that's coming, that you know it's going to pop in that way, mm -hmm. do you get like, not butterflies, do you get excited for that moment? Like, I can't <laughs> wait for the day because you can feel the energy in the room. Because yes. I, don't, I, I don't know about on stage, but in the audience, we knew it was all coming. And we're like, Deo's right, about right, to right. happen. Deo's about to happen, it's guys. Yeah, like, everyone scene. was poised dinner and ready scene. for Deo. Yeah, like, like when totally. When it drops, there is, like, this euphoria. Everyone's like, oh, it's Deo. Like, and sometimes when it, it th that's the thing, when it drops like that, <laughs> and I'm holding that thing, yeah. I have to kind of <laughs> just go, don't, yeah, just take it. Sometimes they're not as loud as other times. Again, like, audiences are, that's sure, why live theaters. every audience is different. But, yeah, when it hits, mm. there's kind of nothing like it. Yeah. There's, it's, it's. It's really, it's really special. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, it's one of those, and you're right, these are movie fans. I was reading online, too. Like, you, you guys have people showing up in costume. Like, people we come do, and I take pictures of them. I post them on my Instagram account. Yeah, I love when people get dressed up. They get really into it. Makeup. Yeah, it's, it's, we have, like, a cult following. We yeah. have started that, and we haven't even opened yet, which is, which is really cool. And our audiences are just rock stars, and they're all different types of people, which... You know, and now kids are coming. Like it's it's really fun. It's it, it feels fun. The whole thing is just like a fun experience. Uh, what about you? Have this ridiculous quick change that you do in this show. I do. <laughs> that I was blown. I, so, so impressive at first. I was like, is that her? That can't possibly be her again. Like, but yeah. it's you. And uh, just tell me a little bit about. Was that always the idea? Were you going to be playing both from day one? No. Uh, or, this, yeah. this was not. This was a last minute addition in DC. They had another number for the Netherworld, which was a boy band. They decided to rethink it. It was very funny, but they decided to rethink it. They came up with this, and uh, the idea is for this is that it's kind of Wizard of Oz. -y. You know, Delia's in the first act. And then she turns into this Miss Argentina, and then she turns. I turn back into Delia. You turn back, yeah. Right. So when when we were figuring out how would this even be possible for me to change into the Deo what you saw, for me to go into the green person that you saw in three minutes. That's all you have. Is three, I have three I minutes to get it, into it. Yeah. Three minutes to get into it. So basically, um, you know, I I jump over a couch, I get out of a scene early, and then I have a team of five people that help me get into that. And it's full green makeup, uh, and then the rest is a, is a bodysuit that's like underneath a, the costume you just saw me wearing. So it's it's quite a little magic trick. It's like a NASCAR pit crew. You just jump off that's stage. That's exactly what I call them, yeah. my NASCAR pit crew. <laughs> that's incredible. It is, you know, someone on my feet, someone on my legs. Someone on, it's like, so it's, it's amazing, and we're all doing yeah. makeup together. Um, and then we have eight minutes to get out of it. So I have to fully, same team, 
almost the same team gets me completely out of it. Wow. Makeup, so yeah. Uh, Have you ever? Is I need a good dermatologist. <laughs> A really yeah. good one. How, <laughs> Soon. Have you uh, look? You look pretty good at this point. But have you Thank found you. green or blue paint on you days after? Oh, there's green in my ear right now right and now? under my hairline. <laughs> oh yeah, it takes a while to get out, you know. And sometimes my husband joked. He's like, uh, "I think we need new sheets." I'm like, "Okay, we can get blue sheets." Now he's like, "Now we can't have white sheets anymore." Okay, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but all the alphabets, I call myself the Spanish alphabet now. Uh, and it's so funny because our theater is next to Wicked. Yeah. So um, my friends who are in Wicked, I'll text them and be like, yeah, okay, now there's another alphabet on Broadway. Uh, but yeah, they, they've been living with the same thing for years too. There's always a little green in your hairline. That's pretty amazing. Have you, um, have there been close calls? Like almost haven't made it, got out there just in the nick of time? Um, yeah, there started to be a few. A few, uh, you know, like when I jump over the couch and I have to crawl out, then run with goggles, take them off, rip my... I've fallen like once, you know, um, strap doesn't want to get in, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for the most part, you know, new wig, all of that, for the most part, we've been lucky. I mean, I'll walk on that stage if I don't have a wig on. I'm going. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> it's, the show is happening. I will arrive, so... So, yeah, what... What are you thinking in those moments? You have three minutes three to minutes. do this transformation. What's in your head right now other than, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit? Like, what are you thinking as um, you're rushing through that moment? Well, for my crew, who I will, it's Leanne, Liz, uh, Steph, Beth, and um, Sarah. They're very calm. And so yeah. when I walk into it, I just, I tell them, I say, you tell me what to do. And so everything is very zen, left foot, right foot, wig, you know, turn your face right, turn your face left. So it stays very calm. So I'm able to actually breathe and just start to take in the transformation, transformation, which is what I do. As I turn green, I kind of turn into her. So as soon as I walk out of the booth, the sash is on, the, the cape, the crown, that's it. That's it. You get out there and you crush it. I literally it. do the same thing every night. Adam did it. My, Adam Danheiser, who plays... Um, Charles, my husband, yeah. when I'm Delia, I clap my hands backstage every night be just to make sure I can make the sound because when I come on stage, I do this one bit when I clap my hands and I have gloves, so it's, I wanted to make sure, but I do it every night, I kick my leg and then I walk on because I do a kick and a dance and then I walk on and I'm, I'm her, that's it. But it, without that team of people, doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Doesn't happen. You know, uh, just to go back real quick, I'm processing the fact that you said that this number was added in D.C. You didn't have this number. It was a boy band number. It was a boy band number in D.C. So that number, once we transferred to New York and we yeah. started rehearsals again, that number was cut. And this number was created. They wanted another iconic Netherworld number from the movie. You know, Miss Argentina in the movie, I think, has four lines. Yeah. But people remember her. People will dress up as her for Halloween. Yeah, you right. Google search it. There's a, th a million images of people right. dressed up as So character. they wanted to create that for her. And it's great because it's another female. It's a strong female number. Totally. Um, you know, I am from Hispanic background. My mother's Puerto Rican. <clears throat> so it was nice to be able to use that side yeah. of my, you know, background that no one really knows about. Mm. Um, and... And yeah, they and and at first they were you know trying to figure it out how can we make this work, you know we sprinkle a little Cardi B in there, it kind of works, <laughs> yeah a little Cardi B in there, my little homage to her too because they love her, and um, and then there it is, there it is. I, the thing that I mean and it's fantastic. The thing that blows me away about it is it's such uh, a, a big moment in the show and the and the, the idea that it was only added recently. And then for you as a performer, for them to come to you and say, hey, you're doing a great job, so great in fact, we're going to give you this huge moment that we need you to do uh, and you'll have three minutes to become this character and yeah. all that. Um, I, I, I got to imagine as a performer, that's exciting when you hear that. But again, like, is there like a tinge of anxiety? Oh my God, we have to add this whole new number. I got to do all this stuff. And now I have, because you go all out during that song. Like, you're amazing. I do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, you know, because my relationship with Alex Timbers and him and I know, know. we work, yeah. we work, we've worked together before, and these writers kind of know me over three years mm -hmm. that I have, they can throw stuff at me, and I'm, and I'm game. Uh, if, if I didn't think I could make it work, I would be like, I don't know. But once we decided that this is the direction we were going in, I said, all right, let's roll up our sleeves. How are we going to do this? And it wasn't, and it wasn't just, um, them. It was the entire team from costumes to makeup to crew, all, us kind of all collectively getting together and going, how can we make this work as, as a, as a team? 
And without all of those components, top to bottom, yeah. it wouldn't have happened. But I love a challenge. I love change. I love, um, thing. like last night on stage, Adam said a line that was cut like oh, two, a week and a half ago. Uh. And, you know, because there's so many versions of the show, things change every single day, pages and pages. He said a completely different line, a great joke line that they cut. And immediately I went right into the response without a blink of the eye and it got a laugh, then we got back on track. And off stage, I was like, wait, did that just happen? Did I just have like a white room moment? And it's because we're so in sync that the ball is thrown up, someone catches it, throws it back, and it's, that's the beauty of theater. It's like, yeah. it's like improv too, it's the same sort of thing, so. That's always a really cool, that, that, you know, you talk about like, oh, there's a level of gratification of like, when you make something or whatever, but like, when you pull that moment off and you like stick that landing, that's a, a, an amazingly gratifying moment, a really cool thing. And uh, I was gonna ask about working with Adam, because you guys, your timing is like spot on, and the chemistry is so great between you two, and you're so funny. Um, you know, was, was that immediate for the two of you? Did that take time for you guys to find that back and forth rhythm that you have now? Now at this point you've yeah. done it so many times, it's like, it's muscle memory, you've got it. But like, what was it like in the early days with him? Well, it's, you know, there's a trust factor, right? So Adam, Adam has done a lot of plays and musicals. He most recently was in Oslo and he was unbelievable in that play. I mean, he, he can really can do anything. But we had to kind of find a trust between us and that like, okay, you got me, I got you. Oh, you're funny. Okay, I'm funny. Yeah. You suss each other out right. and then you go, let's create together. And some people are more game than others. He was very, very game. I'm a very strong presence on stage. <laughs> you know, I don't take any prisoners so you know I'm very I'm very meticulous about how my jokes land it because it's a science to me so he was on board with that and and we supported each other helped each other with bits so yeah we were great and you know so I'll never forget the first time we had to we had to we have to there's a point in the show we have to jump on the table and start making out so the first time we had to stage it you know guys are guys and, uh, and when it's a room full of dudes. And I said, all right, so just go for it. You know, I'm not afraid. Like I said, you know, don't, and he's like, you, what do you mean? And I was like, you know, <laughs> just, just like, just grab me. You know, he's like, just grab you. I was like, yeah, let's just go for it. That's the kind of performer I am. I'm very fearless. I'm yeah. not precious. And he was like, okay. He, tr he was, he was like, all right, she trusts me. I'm like, I trust him and let's go. And now we have the funniest, one of the funniest moments we have is on that table yeah. where we attack each other. And then he like flips me over. It's really <laughs> It's the best. I'm very lucky to have him because it's not always that way. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, you know, we got a kind of like a taste of this in the in the video that we saw, but this show looks incredible. Like it's unbelievable. It, it's uh, the, the set design is out is out of control, and like when the first time the house is revealed and all that, I was like blown away. Um, what was it like for you guys the first time? I mean, like you're in it now, but uh, the first time you saw it and you realized like, wow, that we're, we're inside this universe. Like they've really done a way of creating this like this world in real in the real world for us. Like, what was that like? What does that do for you as a performer to have that? Well, I will say the first time that I walked on in the theater in DC and saw the house, mm -hmm. I cried. Like, I know that sounds no. so cheesy, but I literally cried because I had never been in something so beautiful and big yeah. before, life-size. When, when Alex Timber said to scale, the house is to scale, it is really to scale. I mean, you, you're you in front of it and you're like, whoa. And so to really be able to play on a set that is a magical, like you feel like you're in Harry Potter or something. Totally. This is, you know, we're like the Harry Potter comedy yeah. uh, in many ways. But I mean, he's he's a genius. Yeah. And everyone involved, the projections, the lighting, it's yeah. it's it's really spectacular to be on. Yeah, and the sandworm comes out, and this is the whole thing. Yeah, the hand sometimes will hit me still, one is of the hands. Really? Yeah, well, the other night, massive. we ducked, there's these huge hands, you, you see them in the video, there's yeah. these huge hands, and one like just misses us, and it kind of grazed me, and I, I scream for real, because I just <laughs> was like, scared, you know, they're yeah. they're really, really big, and I fall everywhere, I do, I, do, I think five or six Pratt falls in the show. Wow. Also inspired by, you know, Carol Burnett and all my favorite people. Um, so I have, uh, I don't know if you can see them. I have many bruises. But, you know, I, 
it's it's just so it's fun. a it's a playground. I'm I'm doing what I do best, and and I'm very grateful to be part of it. Have you ever for, forgive my ignorance? Have you ever performed at the at the Winter Garden Theater before? Is no, but no. the people. No, I have only seen shows there. But the yeah. people, the history of people. Like when I go on stage, I'm like, oh my god, Gilda Radner yeah. did her live show here. Wow, Barbara Streisand, Funny Girl. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's so much history in there. The original West Side, yeah. I watched a ton of TV growing up in the 80s and 90s, so I forever associate that place with Cats. Now and forever uh, at the Winter Garden Theater. That yep. was every commercial, every five now minutes. Now and forever. Yeah, now and forever. So it's just like, it's such a, uh, of all the theaters, like it's one of the, it's like one of the theaters. It's such, such an amazing oh. place where so much history and so much talent's been through there. And I'm just curious, like, you know, the energy in that building, like, do you feel it? Like, is it a little different? When I, it is the, fr you know, I've played a lot of beautiful theaters. I've been in the palace, you know, I, 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 I've been very blessed to play some really cool places, but the Winter Garden for me, when I came into the theater and I saw the set, we belong there. It was the first time where I was like, whoa, we're not a show that's, we're coming to fit into the theater. The theater is like enveloping us. And the energy in there is amazing. And also, obviously, because of the history, you really kind of feel it. Um, and it, it's just, it's so special. It's just a really special sort of building. Even the way the dressing rooms are laid out, everyone's kind of near each other. That sort, that sort of stuff does matter. People don't really realize that. But, you know, you're not, it's, you're not separated. Everyone's kind of together. So it's it's really special place to work. Kind of like a college dorm. Everyone's with doors open. Going and even the, the ushers up front, they all know us. They all, yeah. It's like a real kind of family. It's yeah. it's very cool. This one usher that greeted us, she was this amazing uh, uh, older woman, and she was uh, a little bit shorter, and, and she was so sweet, uh, but she was almost like in character in the way that she greeted us and welcomed us. And we were like, Yo, these guys are going all out. Like, everyone here is into this. Well, the chandeliers show. are yeah. purple and green. They yeah, changed all the chandeliers. <laughs> like, they're no joke. Our merchandise is really cool. Yeah. We're pretty the cool amazing. show on Broadway, I have to say. You I guys think are we're a pretty little, cool show. We're cool. We're pretty cool. You're pretty, pretty cool. We're trying to stay that way. Um, we're going to go to audience Q&A in just a second, but there was one last thing I wanted to ask you about. Obviously, you're a little bit busy right now, but you are uh, so talented and so funny, and you just had a show not too long ago at Joe's Pub. Yeah, Burn It to the Ground. Burn It to the Ground, mm -hmm. and uh, you had posted on Instagram, we'll be back in the new year. Obviously, you're a little busy right now, but are you guys still going to come back? Are you thinking of doing the show again? Yeah, or? we want. they want us to come back. We're trying to figure out scheduling because, you know, now it's award season, so, you know, with the show being the priority and seeing whatever, I've, I'm actually in talks with them right now to figure out booking, but, yeah, might not be till the summer till after June but we want to bring it back we have changes with it and it's really exciting it's a great show and it's one of my favorites that I've created so I'm definitely going to be doing it again all my comedy all my character stuff that's really exciting. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to go over to the audience, but Yay. before we do, I'm just going to remind everyone to, to head to go and get tickets. I wrote down the URL so I don't mess it up, of course. Uh, you want to head over to BeetlejuiceBroadway.com for tickets, and you want to go right now because this show is a ton of fun. Uh, the music's amazing. When am I going to get a recording of if I knew then what I when, when, When's the cast recording coming? Have you guys talked about I that at all? I think it's in talks. Okay. I'm it's pretty in talks. sure. People are talking about it. Yeah. There we are. You know, Perfect. the big, the, the high Fs, <laughs> they'll tell us. <laughs> the mucky mucks, the big wigs. The if big you wigs, will. the one we work for. That's right. Uh, awesome. So we've got some. How many, Kate? I got two in the room. Fantastic. Let's get some of those questions. First one is right over yonder. Hi. Hi. Um, so you were saying that you've been working on this show for three years now. Were there any really significant changes that took place with the story, production, or like your characters? Yes. Um, you, in a previous version, we saw Lydia's mom. Uh, the character of Lydia's go the Lydia's mother uh, Emily Dietz comes out the ghost and she used to sing. I mean there was that. Adam used to have a Charles used to have a big proposal song to me that was cut. Um, some of our favorite lyrics were in that. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Tons uh, tons of music. I mean a lot of songs were cut. There was this gorgeous song called Mama Wood that was in DC that cut cut. Um, and also many different people have played these roles. So there's been like switchover of cast a lot, ensemble and principal too. So it's been interesting to play with different, bless you, different um, well people. I know I got that. Uh, and doing these different parts. And the writers were very inspired by those different people. So it's it's been very cool. So those are the ones that I could think of. Oh, and I yeah, I used to I used to do a lot more yoga stuff. Delia was way more um, spiritual gangster. Then now she's more like 
crystals, rocks, like, you know, hangs out in Mere Woods maybe a little bit, but is wearing designer clothing. I don't know if that's that makes sense. Does everyone know Mere Woods in San Francisco? Okay, maybe not, but all right. It's, just, it's a cool place anyway, so yeah. <laughs> So, thank, you thank you for your question. You. It's hard to get a pick up on the Mere Woods reference. Mere Woods, Mere Woods in, in, is just <laughs> Manhattan, but yes, yes, it's it's uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place in San Francisco. Where you just basically go to talk to trees. <laughs> <laughs> talk to trees. Talk to trees. You know, go. where people where people go in San Francisco to do things that people in New York assume they do. Ex they're exactly. Bunch, they're over there talking to trees. Exactly. The exactly. Yeah, right. Where they go do it. Yeah, they do um, it seriously out there. I've got I've got one more. Uh, let's go ahead and do it up. Come on down. Hi. How are Hi. you? Hi. Uh, I was curious if there's any piece of uh, costume prop or set that you plan on stealing when the show comes to a close. <laughs> Stealing when it closes. I well, I hope it doesn't. Um, let's see which one. Hmm, that's a prop. Uh, let's see. I mean, I'd love my top knot wig. I, I just think it's the weirdest thing I've ever worn. When I saw the first sketch of that, I was like, "You're joking, right?" But I'll <laughs> so take tall. it. It's so tall. It so makes me look so much taller. I probably would steal that and maybe my Argentina shoes. Why not? They're like okay. you know Dorothy shoes, but they're like cha cha. Check That's out. very practical because I thought you were going to say the sash, but then like yeah, I guess you can't really walk like, around with that. With it? Out of context, it's yeah. just it's going to wind up in the storage <laughs> box. Yeah. It's like, oh, you were Miss Argent? No, I what? No, it's you know what? Never mind. Right, right, right. It's a long story. Where exactly, this is exactly. Um, this has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm for so having excited me. you came through, especially that you have two shows today. That's this is huge. That two you're here shows. Right now. We open knock on wood for us. Yeah, we're very congratulations excited. on. Everything. Thank yes. Yeah, so hang on. I'll let me stop talking. You were right. Go ahead. Applaud for that. This is. Hey. You're thanks, right. Guys. That's my bad. I shouldn't have stifled that. Uh, thank <laughs> you for that. Uh, again, once again, world Beetlejuicebroadway.com for tickets. Beetlejuicebroadway.com. Go hit it up. Get yourself some tickets. Go have the best night ever. Everybody, let's make her feel at home. She's used to uproarious applause. The great Leslie Kritzer is thank here. You. Come on. Thank thanks you so much. Thank you. Yay.